Well, it's Q&A day, and you know what that means. You guys ask the questions, and I answer them for you. And if I don't know the answer, then let's do what I always do. I'll fake it. So, Sarah Johnson asks, is Rapid Set Mortar Mix durable long term for benches to stay outside even in winter conditions? Absolutely. Uh, Rapid Set Cement, it's a cement, it's a concrete, so it's meant for it to be outdoors. Uh, I've got benches and, and steps and concrete countertops that I've made for outside. They've been out there for about 10 years. They look exactly the same as the day I made them. Timothy Hayes asks, can you lighten up concrete mix by mixing styrofoam in it? And uh, I've, I've heard of this before. Um, unfortunately, I cannot give you a definite answer on that. Um, I personally don't think so, um, but I have heard of people doing special things with styrofoam to lighten up concrete, um, but I'm not sure they are exactly concrete products. Don Matooks, by the way, guys, if I mispronounce your name, I am so sorry, and I hope I don't offend anybody. Don asks, can you dye Rapid Set Mortar Mix? Absolutely. Just make sure that you get any kind of dye or, or concrete colorant that is made for concrete or cement, and you can't really go wrong. But I definitely have plans to show you some outside of the box coloring techniques that I've kind of learned, and they're fun, inexpensive. Don't know what they do to the strength of concrete, but <laughs> anyway. Moving on, uh, we have Marie Lynn. This one's one of my OGs. Hey, Marie. Marie says, when I do my concrete countertops with Rapid Set, I don't plan to flip them set in place. How can I decorate the surface to make it look like granite or something interesting like with glitter, uh, for instance, all the while keeping it smooth on the surface? So when pouring in place, uh, it's very difficult to decorate. Um, I'm not saying it can't be done. Um, I have not decorated a pour in place. Um, I've only decorated my my inverted casts where I decorate the mold, pour, flip it over, and then I do some sort of grinding or something like that maybe. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's very difficult. I can't answer this question 100%, but one thing I do know is that you're not gonna be able to accomplish a pour in place decoration without some sort of grinding. So you can't decorate it, trowel it smooth, and then be done. So that was a great question, Marie. I'm sorry I couldn't shed some more light on that one for you. Nathan Olson says, uh, where do babies come from? I don't know what's more sad about this question. That you don't know where babies come from or that I know Nate. Also, Nate, you have two children. How do you... Nate's wife, I don't know how you put up with them. I don't. Joshua McClure, how do you determine how much cement you need and how thick do you need it? Like, for example, your first video about the concrete countertop and then you stood on it and showed how strong it was. Well, pretty much all concrete countertops, I feel, should be an inch and a half thick, no matter how wide or uh, long. A 55 pound bag of rabbit set will do a two foot by two foot square. So that's a very quick way to figure out how much cement you need or how much concrete you need. But that's usually how I figure it out. Siamco asks, how can you dye the mortar mix to get true colors? Example, true black, not like dark gray, or true blue, not a pastel version. You basically use the max amount of dye that you can use with any concrete product. So for example, if you do end up using, like say the, the quick recolor mix, it's one whole bottle to one bag of product. As far as a blue color is concerned, you'd have to go to a concrete specialty place to get uh, a, a blue concrete color mix. You're not going to be able to find that in a big box store. All right, Chris Scales 17. Can you do an update video for the work that you have already done? Absolutely. I can kind of go around and, and show you what my work looks like. Some of them maybe not because some of them I actually like the curved bar top. I actually ended up demolishing that because it was in the way. Nobody wanted it that was within driving distance and the people that did want it, it would cost way too much to ship it out. So the uh, curved bar top is no more, but sometimes I destroy the things I make because I can just simply make another one. <laughs> this goes along with the next question. The day drinker, 
How's the concrete resurfacer you posted a few months ago holding up? It looks fantastic. And now that it's winter in Michigan and everything's frozen, uh, it's still holding up great. Curtis Boyd, why are you so short? It's because my mom made me that way, all right? Also, I'm half Italian, so I'm like half the size. Does that make sense? By the way, Curtis, only like a half inch taller than me. He says a win's a win, but Delvis 78. If making a countertop by yourself, could you make smaller sections so that they are more manageable, then coat the top smooth? Yes and no. Uh, you can make sections uh, to make it easier and more manageable uh, to try to blend those seams in. Uh, unfortunately, no, that'd be very tough. You could blend them in, you can make them smooth, but they will never match color-wise because the color that you make with the flip top and the color that you trowel out gonna be two completely different colors, unfortunately. A lot of times I just make seams where they make sense to a concrete countertop and I'll fill them in with a clear silicone. It's an industrial look, so I promise it'll make sense. Ronnie Stanley. I just finished a kitchen build where I used your method to do a five piece concrete countertop system. My tops were the rapid set mix and came out as a tannish color. I used a Rust-Oleum brand wet sealer and they look great, but I am also wondering about the color thing for future projects. P.S. I made some small test tops and left them outside. To all the people wondering, after a year, they still look and feel the same and are still unbroken underweight. Good job, Ronnie. So the tannish color. In general, concrete can sometimes be this color when you mix it with this dye lot and this color when you mix it with that dye lot. Rapid set mortar mix does turn out to be a tannish color. Unfortunately, on camera, it turns out looking like it's a, a light grayish color. But no, that is normal for it to be a tannish color. Just keep in mind that when you are doing these concrete projects in cold weather and then doing them in warmer weather, you will get two different colors just because of the temperatures. I noticed that colder temperatures will make it look a little darker, Hotter temperatures will make it look a little lighter for some reason. <laughs> Slap stop getting heavy. Ron Riggs, is there a wait time before you seal with epoxy as with your River Rock countertop? When mixing multiple bags of cement, do you have enough time between pours that you do to, to have a, a cold joint? I remember something about a powdered time but I couldn't find where you mentioned it. If you're using rapid set cement, you only gotta wait 24 hours. That's pretty cool. That's uh, one of the many reasons why I use it all the time. As far as mixing multiple bags and that cold joint, just mix and pour as fast as you can. Mix and pour as fast as you can. I can't stress that enough. As far as the powder time is concerned, I'm not sure exactly what you're talking about. I never use the word powder time. I don't know what powder time is. I, I'm so sorry that I can't help you out with that. <laughs> Clint Reardon, when you do your concrete tables, do you mix the buckets ahead of time or do you mix, then pour, then mix another and pour? Uh, again, uh, especially when you're using the rapid set, just mix, pour, mix, pour, mix, pour. You don't have time to wait. Mix pour. I can't stress that enough. If you mix everything up ahead of time, you're just asking for trouble. You're gonna lose a lot of buckets that way. <laughs> Leslie Clem, I know you've used metal as reinforcement. What about fiberglass reinforcement? Would that affect the texture or finish of a project? Well, yes and no. You absolutely can use fiberglass as a reinforcement. It's gotta be special fiberglass so that the fiberglass doesn't have a chemical reaction with the concrete and then deteriorate. When you're doing an inverted mold, uh, really not gonna affect the texture too much. But if you're doing some sort of grinding or light grinding or something like that, or troweling, those fibers could float up to the top and that might affect your, your texture. But some people are going for that look, so. Mark Nixon, how would you make fake boulders and or boulders for outdoor electrical covers using rabbit set mortar mix? Very carefully. <laughs> so, you would end up making a frame out of, out of steel wire, then covering it with some sort of metal lab like this. Then packing it with that peanut butter consistency, just pack it in, pack it in, smooth it out, pack it in. That's if you're doing like large boulders. One of these days, one of these days I'm gonna show you guys how to do some like like small rocks, small boulders, do a little sculpting with the mortar mix. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Good question, Mark. Todd Brachenstein. Uh, I'm so sorry. Todd, 
The Rapid Set Mortar Mix you use looks tan in the videos. Is it tan? I'm looking to make kitchen countertops, but I want them to be a gray color. You're right, uh, the mortar mix does tend to be very tan. If you go with something like the Cementol, that's a nice light off-white or like a, a, a light gray. Or you could just add some charcoal color into it. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. Uh, test it out, do some small test pieces. Yeah, real simple. Miop79. I did a counter like yours, but the grout sucked up into the concrete, so it was invisible and seemed to have caused air bubbles. Any ideas what I did wrong? There could be a number of things going on with that, from which I found in my experience, maybe wiping off the WD-40 too much so that that way the grout couldn't kind of hold on to something as you poured, or pouring too aggressively that could just wash away the grout lines and then it just mixes them with the concrete. Having a, a not wet enough mix, if your mix is a little bit too dry and too thick, it's just gonna push that grout out of the way and it's gonna smear it all over the place. As far as the bubbles are concerned, it could be just not jostling it enough, not hammering or vibrating the edges enough. My grout technique does cause pitting though. Um, it's something that you gotta kinda just know and be okay with when you're doing my method uh, with that grout. But if you use non-sanded grout, you have less of a chance of having any kind of pitting or bubbles. Let's change positions. John Hodson asks, I see the hand tools and the guitar templates on almost every video. I would love to see more of that work. I know it may not be your mainstream audience, but I still think it would be cool. I think it would be cool too. And definitely, definitely plan on doing a guitar build on this channel. My niece and I made this guitar together. It was my first and only electric guitar that I've ever made, but it was so much fun. And I just wanna think of a way to film it to where everybody's gonna love it. Even if you don't play guitar or plan on building a guitar or owning a guitar, I just, I wanna make sure I do this one right. Uh, with that being said, I'm actually currently starting to attempt to build my first acoustic guitar out of some scrap wood. We'll see how this goes, but uh, from what I'm learning about acoustic guitars, it's all about the jigs. So I got a bunch of jigs to build first, and then I can start making my own acoustic. Uh, I'll let you guys know how that one goes too. I'll kind of film a little bit, but it's not gonna be a how-to. Uh, and if you watch the channel, uh, you know that um, I watch Monty McKinnon. He teaches you how to build acoustic guitars, and so I'm very excited to try this out. It looks like fun. It's expensive, man. I'll leave you a link above to his channel if you want to check it out. Robert Way or Robert Waite. I live in an area that does not have Rapid Set products readily available. Have you used Quick Cree products and have you tried using the flow control in anything other than Rapid Set? Uh, I wouldn't mind ordering flow control online, but I don't want to pay the shipping fees for bad concrete. Oh my god, you're absolutely right. Bad concrete to ship is super killer expensive. I have not used the Quick Cree product to do concrete countertops. I've done some small projects. Works out great. It's just a way longer cure time. You absolutely have to use metal reinforcement in those projects. I have not personally used flow control in Quickrete or any kind of Portland-based material, but I'm told that it works out, just not as dramatically as with the Rapid Set. Don't quote me on that. Catherine Elaine asks, will you attempt another eater fountain design? I'm not sure what an eater fountain is, but yes. Water features in general are just too cool not to do. I want to eventually figure out some sort of fire and water feature to do on this channel. That's coming next year. Next year. Miss C asks, can a novice at concrete actually make their kitchen concrete countertops look worse? Going from dated standard countertops, I'm really interested, but scared to take the plunge. You make it look easy. Did you screw up projects when you were new at this? This is such a good question. Yes, you can make it look worse. I've definitely made some things look worse. Everything I've accomplished is through trials and tribulations. Some end up looking like masterpieces. Some are accidents that end up looking like masterpieces. Practice makes perfect, though. Get in that shed. Get in the garage. Get out there and just... Just start making stuff. Do test pieces. That's the only way you're gonna really, really learn. That's the way you have fun. It really is. And when it ends up working out, I totally meant to do that, right? <laughs> Dana Johnson says, I thought the video on how to make a concrete bowl was awesome. Thank you so much, Dana. I'm gonna share it with my friend. Damn right you are. That's what I'm talking about. Share, like, subscribe. That's what I'm talking about. This is the first time I've ever seen your videos. How long have you been doing this type of work? Have a wonderful Thanksgiving from Tennessee. Thank you so much, Dana from Tennessee. And happy Thanksgiving to you too. As far as the concrete work is concerned, I've been doing it for about, about 10 years is when I started really messing around with concrete. As far as just woodworking and general carpentry, stuff like that, I just, I, 
I think I came out with a hammer. Being in an Italian and Polish family, you, you receive a toolbox, a hard hat, and a hammer at the baby shower. All right. Ziva Hope Thomas, Wounded Soul Refuge. I just found your channel and I'm really enjoying it. Thank you so much. I would love to make concrete countertops in my home and I would like to know what a single square foot of the finished concrete countertop weighs to see if I can do this. I know it's heavy stuff, thank you, I can do the math from there. I would have to say it's about 12 to 15 pounds per square foot, depending on how much water's in there. SSCR Silent asks, have you ever built a home? No I have not, but I built this shed pretty much just like a home and I've done so many different steps of the home building process that pretty darn sure I could build a house. I, I, I am 85, 80, 79% confident that I could build a home uh, with my own bare hands, I, I swear. <laughs> Rumrunner41 says, you seem pretty handy. What is your day job? I can't give up exactly what I do for a living for security reasons, uh, for safety of my family, and uh, uh, for the job I work for, but I do work with concrete and I do travel a lot. Joseph Willow says, my grandfather always said that there are two types of concrete, cracked kind and the kind that hasn't cracked yet. What is your experience with this saying? Never heard that one before, but concrete's gonna crack. Eventually concrete will crack. <laughs> Not my concrete though. Kerrigan0419, this is another one of my OGs. Michael, you gotta tell me where you learned how to edit. Your production quality is exceptional. I like you. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Especially since a year ago, I had absolutely no idea how to record. I had absolutely no idea how to edit. Found a fella named Peter McKinnon on YouTube, learned everything I know about editing and camera work from this guy. You guys should check him out, Peter McKinnon. Piggybacking off of that, Haley Whitehall says, what do you use to record your YouTube videos? I'm so glad you asked. So I wanna show you this wonky setup I got. So, so come on over here. So this is what I record all of my YouTube videos with. It is an iPhone 8 with a $15 lens kit, a cheap $15 tripod, cool road mic. Got a link down below for this guy. I think I got a link uh, below for all these guys. I have the cursed dongle, the dongle. The dongle gets you every time, guys, every time. And that's pretty much it. This is what I've recorded every single one of my YouTube videos with. Uh, my first five videos I edited with the, the iMovie app that comes on your phone. <gasps> oh my gosh, that would cause me so much anxiety. I was eventually able to get Adobe Premiere Pro and I love editing on that. So, very good question, Haley. Honeybee, Honeybee asks, Honeybee thought she missed this one, but you didn't. She says your man cave, the shed, heated, or do you only do projects in warm weather than weather in the winter? P.S. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Happy Thanksgiving to you too. And to answer your question, no, my shed is not heated. And I've got to change out these propane tanks like every other session. And it's getting pretty old pretty quick. But I just recently had a company named New Air, I believe, sent us a heater for free. So, the next video is actually gonna be about hooking that heater up and installing a special electrical line for it. Not a sponsored video, but they sent us a heater for free, and I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Because that's a pain in the butt. Suzanne May. I'm wanting to make a kitchen island countertop. It has a 10 inch overhang. Do I need to reinforce the concrete with mesh or support my countertop with something? Anything over like say a two inch overhang, I would definitely do some sort of metal reinforcement for sure. And it doesn't hurt to kind of support it underneath with some nice corbels or something like that. It's a very good question, Susan. Doug's Shed, tell us why you started doing such projects. Is it related to your day job? My family, we've just always done our own handiwork, our own projects. We tend to be more on the creative side, so I really can't stop myself from turning normal stuff into just uh, just punching it up just a little bit. Um, I wish I could tell you more about my day job, which I will someday, but uh, I just, I kind of always enjoyed creating uh, with wood, concrete. I want to learn how to work with metal more, but 
uh, again, a very large creative side did come out of my day job, though. So I can't say that it didn't. Alex, Breg uh, Alex Bregner, again, I'm sorry if I mispronounce that. Do you have any other types of builds? Maybe woodworking? Absolutely. This is never meant to be strictly a concrete channel. I definitely want to get some woodworking. And uh, I've got a buddy that knows how to weld uh, metal, and I, I've asked him if uh, I could come over and he can teach me some welding techniques. Uh, I want to do a project where it's a little bit of concrete, a little bit of wood, a little bit of welded metal. Oh, definitely. Absolutely. Yes. Eva Rogers, what's your favorite tool in your workshop and why? Oh, that's such a good question, Eva. And it's such a hard one to answer. Hold on. Okay, so... This is my rigid table saw with a granite top. They don't even make them with the granite tops anymore. I love this saw. When I got this saw, it opened up a whole new world for me as far as woodworking was concerned. I was able to cut thicker material. I was able to make more accurate cuts. I was able to fit it with a dado blade set. There's just nothing I can't do with this table saw. I love it. So you guys remember Norm Abram from uh, New Yankee Workshop? You might not be old enough, I don't know. So, bought the plans to build this router cabinet, and again, just like the table saw opened up a whole new world in woodworking for me, I was able to do way more with a router. It's really cool. It's got storage for all my crap, all my junk. It's got little drawers for all the awesome big, huge routers. So, so another thing this enables me to do is use these really big, huge, thick, fat routers and do all sorts of cool stuff with it. It's got an awesome fence. It just, it rocks. I love it. And this, I, I don't even, for some reason, I just love my rigid circular saw. Don't, it just makes me feel like a badass when I cut with it. I love it. You can do a lot of cool uh, rough carpentry with this guy and you can do miters fast. It just, I, I just dig it. So, which one's my favorite? What, you can't, like, like kid, you can't, you can't pick a favorite kid. I know a lot of you are out there saying, say, yeah, I got a favorite kid. You, you can't say that, you can't say that. All right, last question. Benny Matthew, as being said by Science Geeks, how come everything comes from nothing? Me talking Big Bang Theory. I love the Big Bang Theory. I also love The Office, Parks and Rec, The Walking Dead, GH, don't judge me. Fear the Walking Dead, True Blood, The Mandalorian, yeah! Anyway, what was the question again? Oh yeah, the answer to the question is because you guys rock. And with that being said, let's figure out who the winner of the giveaway is. Gleam.io, choose winner. The winner is Corey Flaherty. Congratulations, Corey. So I'm gonna shoot you an email, you send me your address, and I'm gonna ship that box of goodies right on off to you. Thank you very much to everybody that participated. I promise there's gonna be many more in the future. And I don't know about you guys, but I had a lot of fun with this. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this q and I love communicating with you guys, and I would love to do this again someday. So happy holidays to everybody. If you haven't subscribed yet, please think about doing so. I promise you won't regret it. See you guys in the next one.